Okay, this is just a quick review of yesterday. We are doing transformations on the parent functions. So basically, you're just moving things around. So if we had this, this is the general form for taking a function. And do you remember that the stuff on the inside here changes it left, right? And the stuff on the outside changes it what? Up and down. So if I said, for instance, y equals absolute value of x plus 3 minus 5, would you please write down for me that that's going to move like, you know, 3 up and 5 left, even though that's totally wrong. Write down what the two things are that this would do to my function. I'll pause for a second while you do that. All right, you should have said 3 to the left. If you said to the right, I totally understand your mistake because the stuff on the inside is counterintuitive. Plus 3 seems like it moves right 3 on the number line, but you got to remember everything on the inside is opposite of what you'd expect. So it's not right 3, it's left 3. And then how about this one? Can you trust the stuff on the outside? Yes, so it seems like down 5, and it is down 5. All right, raise your hand if you had them both right. Okay, good. That's the main thought. All right, that's half your homework is just like, you see an equation like that, and they say, where did it move? And you just say, oh, I went 3 to the left and down 5. Right? And the other part of your homework is actually graphing. So let's say I had this problem to graph. Can you start by graphing the parent one and then just move it? Yes, that works great. So do you remember where a parent y equals x squared parabola would be? If you do, would you put the dots generally? I know you don't have graph paper right now, unless you happen to download notes. But just put the dots generally where they would be. And it's not a V shape. I was starting to make a V for a minute there. Over 2 and up. Four. You can do these in your head. You don't have to like have them memorized. Over three and up nine, because three squared is nine. There we go. And then if I did grab these, where should I move it? Down four? No. Where? Right four. Okay. So then again, you guys would probably be using that scissors tool. Grab it. Oh, undo. That should be locked in place. Locking. Lock in place. And now I can grab these better. And I can move them four to the right. Seems like left. Actually is right. If you can't trust the same things on the inside. There we go. Is there other ways to do it? Yeah. But this is probably the easiest way to do it for now. Just grab the parent one. Move it. Now, how about domain and range? Domain is left to right. Range is up and down. What did I just do wrong? It's a really common mistake. Down to up. That's right. The range is down first. It's how low does it go? Up. Uh, okay. UUP. All right, so anyway, left to right. Looking at this function right here, left, right, how far will it go? Well, it's going to keep going to the left, isn't it? So forever to the left means what? Negative infinity. Forever to the right means what? Positive infinity, okay? Then the range. How low does this thing go? Zero. It's really common for people to say four because it happens to be sitting on a four. But the lowest it goes is zero. And then, won't it keep going up forever? And forever up is infinity. And then, where did I make my little mistake now? Bracket is correct on the 4 because it touches 4. And, <laughs> why did I put a 4 there? Weird. Sorry. Okay. From 0 to, because I was talking about the 4 so much. I said people make that mistake, and then I did it. Uh, okay, anyway, 0 as the lowest it goes to infinity. All right, and I put a bracket on the zero because it actually touches zero. It gets to zero. And there's a lot of our functions later that have what are called asymptotes, which means you get really, really close to the thing, but you never actually touch the thing. It's uh, the same idea as uh, getting really, really pure water. Okay, Once you put in a little bit of imperfection in the water, like let's say you have a bathtub and you, uh, you fill it with water, or even just like halfway full of water. You put in one drop of like iodine in it, it's not pure water anymore. You can get close to pure by adding more and more and more pure water to it, 
gets really close to pure, but it's not going to ever be pure. And you, now you take what's inside your bathtub and pour it in the, the swimming pool outside that was empty, and you keep filling it with water. Is it ever going to be completely pure? Yeah. No. You can get close. Now, if you filter it out, that's a different thing than just adding more pure water to it. Okay, so that's kind of what getting closer and closer, but never being able to actually get to it is kind of like. All right, so anyway, we have things called asymptotes, and they're going to be like this, and then the functions will get closer and closer to that number, but it'll never, it'll get so close, but it'll never actually touch it. So that's when you use parentheses. But this actually touches zero, so it's simpler. You need, need the bracket then. Okay, so that's just a quick review of translating functions. And your homework is just like that. I'm going to shorten up your homework a little bit because we're going to do something in class that takes a lot of your time today. We're going to do that one of those top 20s in class timed. And that's all I have for the video for today.